Welcome to the Statics and Strength of Materials course. My name is Vinay Goyal, and today we'll be discussing lecture number one, Syllabus and Introduction. I have a mechanical engineering degree at the University of Puerto Rico, a PhD at Aerospace and Ocean Engineering at Virginia Tech. Uh, I have been involved in a lot of different assessments of launch vehicles and spacecraft uh, in the areas of fatigue, fracture, strength, failure crusher of composites, I've worked with a number of materials, including composites, metallics, additive manufacturing. Um, you can communicate with me at vinay.k.goyal at gmail.com. And then we'll also be using Piazza as a communication tool where you could ask questions and help each other out to answer them. As, you, as we walk through this course, I invite you to, be, to stay engaged, um, to learn uh, statics and mechanics and materials. Statics is a branch of mechanics that is really concerned with the analysis of loads, forces, torque, moments. They're acting on physical systems and they are in static equilibrium. In, in, in fact, in this course, we will not be focusing in analyses that are dynamic, meaning no accelerations are included in their environment. Below, we have a picture of an equilibrium of pliers. Typically, structures are subject to loads. And these loads are reacted either internally or by other boundary conditions. In this case, the equilibrium of these pliers is provided by the loads applied externally at the handles and then reacted at the location where the, the object is picked up. The mechanics and materials branch is the second course part of this course and it will deal with the behavior of solid objects subject to stresses and strains. In this case, loads are applied to the structure, but then we would like to determine how these loads get distributed within the structure. And one way to determine this is by calculating the stresses that are internal to the part and the strains that are internal to the part. This will be done on beams, columns, shafts. In a lot more complicated structures, typically, we will need finite element methods. As the pictures below, uh, you can see a car, a tube, these models were done in finite elements, and in finite elements, you can then determine stresses and strains when loads are applied externally. In this class, we'll mainly focus on basics in the ability to calculate the stresses and strains on simple problems, which uh, you could will be, become very beneficial later on in your career when you want to verify uh, your analysis of more complicated structures. Uh, we'll also be discussing uh, various phenomena associated with the various materials. I invite you to take notes, notes in class. I invite you to go over concepts and problems discussed in every lecture, read the textbook, um, do the homework pr problems every week. Um, also contact the TA or the instructor if you need any help. Uh, the, there's no lead sub submissions accepted and uh, I invite you not to miss any class. In this uh, picture, we see a balance um, of various performers. Uh, the main loading conditions that we see here is the weight of each performer. And this weight of each performer uh, gets translated from performer to performer until you get to the very bottom uh, of their feet. At their feet, all the loads above are getting reacted by the floor back, but you also have a frictional force that keeps all the performers able to stay um, together in this uh, configuration. So in this analysis, in this class, in statics, what we're trying to do is determine how these loads are getting reacted and supported in order to, to allow the structure to remain in equilibrium. This is extremely important in a lot of different applications, um, including the counterweight for cranes. Here's an example where cranes are used, and when cranes are used um, in construction projects, um, they, they usually carry a counterweight. You can see that on the bottom right uh, picture. Um, this counterweight allows the structure to remain in equilibrium uh, about the base of the crane uh, so that the reaction at the base does not cause failure of the tower. We also can use analysis to understand the impact events that could occur. Here's an example of a, 
of a cell phone that has been subject to impact. Um, basically, mechanics and materials and statics are very fundamental courses that when you build upon, you, you can then use to, to study more advanced problems like this one. Here's a, a residual telescope. These were near where I grew up. Uh, it shows the greatest uh, or one of the largest single dish radio telescopes. Um, it's a 305 meter diameter spherical reflective, re reflective dish cover um, and it's suspended above by 900 ton platform. Um, and then here, this kind of platform, uh, at, uh, you know, has to be in the kitty room. And you have to determine the tension in the supporting cables to allow that for, for to, to happen. Here's an example of tugboats um, that the are exerting forces on the USS Pasadena. Uh, all these, these forces can be replaced by a single equivalent force exerted by the tugboat. And this class will teach you how to do uh, this type of force balance. In this picture we see the types of forces acting on a bicycle. Uh, typically, you have the weight of the bicycle, the weight of the cyclist. You have normal forces between the foot and the pedal. You have the normal force between the cyclist and the seat. You have the normal force between the hands and the handlebar. You have the normal force between the tire and, 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 and the ground. And, and these forces, including frictional forces, need to be balanced for the system to be in equilibrium. All this uh, can be extended to other operations like automobiles, ski lifts, airplanes, buildings, bridges, ships. They all, all have to be in equilibrium. Forces by brake pads, um, they act by applying normal and frictional forces. From the brake pads, these forces are translated to the rim and pressed against the rim to resist the motion of this wheel. The Golden Gate Bridge is uh, another example where st statics concepts were, can be used to understand how bridge functions and why the Golden Gate Bridge is shaped the way it is. The Golden G Gate Bridge has been chosen in this manner uh, and is spectacular, uh, but it's really driven by statics consideration. It has been subjected to earthquakes, strong winds, and tides and yet it performs the, the function that's supposed to be performing. Engineers designing this bridge use statics to really understand uh, the loads in this bridge and to design them against these loads so that it can survive the environments that we'll be experiencing. In general, in, uh, in general you have several loads. You have ground tower loads on the bottom right you can see some of the loads acting on these type of bridges, but the bottom line is the theme is the same over and over and over. How you design a structure to survive the loads it will see in service. And that is the excitement of statics and mechanics and materials. It gives you those tools to start understanding how to go about that. And now a lot of these applications go beyond bridges, it also goes to aircraft. And here's a case of a steady state flight where the lift condition is getting balanced by the weight. That's a steady state loading condition. You can also analyze many other flight conditions um, and that can be uh, pull-up maneuvers, roll, bank, um, pull-down maneuvers, uh, and many other uh, types of uh, flight uh, profiles. Here's an example of an aircraft that's subject to loading during landing and these loads uh, are basically you have the wing lift you have the gear reacting the ground and then you have the frictional forces and so forth these all these loads have to be in balance for the system to be in, in equilibrium and the forces in the aircraft then get translated to internal loads in the structure and these are the areas that could fail and what we want to do is, given the loads applied to the structure, what are the loads internally to the structure, and what are the critical areas that we have to design for to prevent failure from happening. And you can see that there are several regions in the structure that are quite critical, including rudders, wings, fuel boxes, 
you have the fuselage itself, and you have the nose, um, and all these different surface areas that also act like surface control surfaces. Uh, it's important for them to survive the loading conditions, for the structure to survive uh, its operation during its service life. Here's an example of the 1989 7.6 earthquake in Taiwan. Uh, in this earthquake, uh, there's severe damage that occurred due to the sheer failure in the middle columns. Um, and so, status can be used to determine enveloping loading conditions that should, that structure should be designed for, so this type of scenario is prevented. We also have the Kansas City, Missouri event, 1981, where 2,000 people were gathered watching a dance contest, and then what happened was that the second and fourth level walkways collapsed. Uh, while people died and passed away, the investigation revealed that there were issues between the original design and the actual construction. A lot of times, the errors are caused not due to the design phase, but during the implementation implementation of these designs. Causes of failures typically is, is driven by insufficient knowledge of the loading conditions, insufficient knowledge about the failure modes, the material properties. In fact, there can be sufficient knowledge about the manufacturing process. Maybe somebody made some errors in the manufacturing. We can also under, underestimate the influence of the loads that we thought that were benign at first. We can be carelessness, uh, negligent, and also we could perform errors in the design phase. Uh, characterizing the materials in the incorrect manner can also lead to designs that are flawed. Um, in some cases, we just don't know why the structure failed. And so that's why we have to have some amount of conservatism to cover for things that are unknown unknowns. Material failure due to excessive stress, excessive stress or deformation due to unexpected extreme service conditions or environments is a typical failure mode that, that should be examined carefully. And that's one area we can control. We can make sure that the, when the loads are applied that the structure stress the stresses in the structure are lower than the material strengths and that it will survive the service environments for which it was designed for. The big picture, what we want to do at the end of the day is to ensure that given the force balance and the dynamics, the geometry of deformation and deformation kinematics, that when, when we apply these loads to the structure and deformations, that we can actually ac accurately capture the stresses in the structure uh, by characterizing the materials properly, and that we can we can predict the failure of the structure quite well. If we can do that, then we can design a structure that is robust during its operation. In this course, uh, we're going to be covering the vectors, forces, uh, objects in equilibrium, uh, trusses, frames, machines. And we will also talk about frictional forces as they play a big role in uh, various applications like bearings, clutches, belts. Uh, we'll also discuss strength of materials. That'll be the second part of this course. We'll discuss distributed loads, how these loads get distributed uh, in the cross sections, uh, internal forces and moments in loaded beams. We'll also discuss the concept of stress, strain, stresses in beams, deflection of beams, and pressure vessels. So this course will be quite uh, extensive, uh, and um, in this course we'll be using uh, the office hours as dis discussing Piazza, the homework as discussing Piazza. The grading will be 20% homeworks, 30% midterms, 20% quizzes during the discussion session, and the final will be 30%. The owner code will be dis will be very enforced. I'll make sure that everybody works individually. If you have questions, it's important that you ask the questions. Uh, but plagiarism is not allowed. Collaborative efforts are allowed, but not um, plagiarism. The work has to be strictly your own. The exams and quizzes will be closed notes and closed books. The book of this course is Statics and Mechanics and Materials by Bedford, Fowler, and Lecce. There's related courses uh, in, in, that can be covered uh, that go more 
they're more advanced than this course, and that will be the advanced strength of materials, uh, analysis of flight structures, design of composite structures, the introduction to final element methods, which is extensively used in the design of large-scale structures, and then there's the introduction to mechanical vibrations. Well, with this, uh, I thank you for uh, listening to this first lecture, and I hope you're ready for a, a great journey.